What do you mean it sucks? This pepper beef is too damn spicy! <laughs> What are you talking about? This is good. How's it going guys? Pepper Roof to Spice here. Hope you guys are doing alright. And uh, today is going to be the first of many, hopefully, uh, tech and quick tips, which I like to call. Um, it's going to be a series of videos which are going to be much shorter than the actual tech and 1-1 uh, tutorial videos. Like the little quick tips here and there just to help you edge out your game, you know, just get a little bit better. Um, stuff that if I included it in the Tekken 101 videos, it would actually take like a lot of time. So this is to like help, you know, Lee like spread all, all, all the info, spread it out, have it not all jumbled together so it's easier to consume. Um, and so this is a quick one, we gotta do it fast, right? So if this, uh, the first episode or the first part, whatever you wanna call it, is gonna cover the topic of why do you lose? It's a really, really broad topic, um, and there are a lot of reasons why you could lose, obviously. There's, like, Tekken has a lot of things in it, a lot of ways to get hit, a lot of ways to make mistakes, a lot of ways to just not know what to do at the time, at the right time, and there's tons of reasons why you could lose. Like, even luck-based uh, scenarios where, like, off-axis combos, or uh, you made the wrong read, or he happened to do a move that would, uh, you know, crush your move, or whatever. A lot of reasons why you could lose, but uh, this one is specifically targeting um, when you are new to the game, yet you are making what is probably the best way to approach the game, which is with a, a learning mindset, which is uh, a mindset where you're like, all right, uh, I want to get good at this game, or at least I want to have fun with it, so I'm going to learn this, I'm going to learn that, I'm going to learn how to punish, I'm going to learn how to backdash, I'm going to learn how to like make a mix-up, I'm going to learn how to make a combo, I'm going to learn how to uh, whiff punish, backdash, all those sorts of things. I'm going to learn how to sidestep learn how to be patient, you know, these are all very, very good things, and then, um, but the thing is, realistically, unless you are, like, really, really, really good, um, like, a prodigy or something, and some of you may be by the time I'm saying this video, but, um, no matter how much you prepare for the game, you are gonna lose, like, a lot, like, there are certain things you cannot teach just by teaching, there are things that, you can only really learn through experience. Um, that's why I always say that knowledge and the actual instinct or the awareness of a player is very two different things because I know a lot of things about the game, but you don't see me in top eight in tournaments all the time because you know I'm not perfect. I'm not I'm a okay player because I may know that Paul's shoulder is launch punishable on block all the time, but I don't punish it with the launcher all the time because, well, I'm I'm not perfect. I don't have the reactions for that. I don't have the instinct to go for the launch every time I block uh, Paul's shoulder, which is down 1 plus 2, by the way. So how do I, how do you get better is simply through experience because it's really hard to play perfect in this game. There are so many right decisions you could do. Like, if you rewatch a match, there are so many things that are like, oh, I should have done this, or I should have done that, blah, 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 blah. But, you know, it's a different kind of experience when you're in the actual match. Uh, thinking about what you should do, what's the right decision, that's actually something that a really good player at Tekken has under their belt is the awareness and the know-how on what to do at the right time. And even so, when you're in a match, especially if you're a new player and you're still trying to like, you know, you're still picking up the game, you're still relatively fresh off the boat, you're gonna you're gonna have so much things going on in your head. You're like, oh, he's doing a jab, so I should duck. And then all of a sudden there's a hop kick. And then it's like, well, what happened? And then things start to speed up a lot. And then you're like, I don't even know what to do anymore. I, I know what to do, yet I don't know what to do. It's It's natural. Everybody, when they started playing this game, was a scrub. Everybody sucked when they started playing Tekken. Uh, it's just a game that requires you to get a lot of experience in first. Um, and that is going to come with a lot of losses. Um, so when you are losing, don't sweat it, because that's just how it is. You need to get, you essentially need to get the experience beaten into you to before you can start to grasp and get a feel for the game. Because you can't really teach getting a feel for the game. You can only really get that through experience. So, you know, you may play a guy and he doesn't know what he's doing, which I like to call uh, insane players or players who have autopilot turned on all the time. 
Um, and these are players, no offense to anybody, who they don't really have uh, an idea of how to play the game. They just have a series of maybe a, a couple in unoptimal combos and a bunch of attacks that they think are good moves, which some of them may be and some of them may not really be. So, and then they use these moves because they think that they are the goal to winning the game is just if I just keep spamming these moves, then I will win. Um, depending on the move, that might be the case, but you know, um, these players, they don't really have an understanding of how the game sort of is played at a higher level of play or what is the goal of the game in a simpler way of saying. Like, for example, they don't understand that uh, I'm jabbing you so I can sidestep bait into a launcher. Maybe they'll just take the jab and they'll press a button afterwards and then all of a sudden my, my sidestep got owned. Well, in that scenario, that's not because they were looking to attack my sidestep. They were just pressing buttons because that's just what they're used to. So, you know, you may think like, well, I have this perfect game plan in my head. I'm going to scare him with these lows and then I'm going to hit him with the mid. And this guy's still not going to block low. Not because he's expecting a mid, just because he doesn't think about it. You know, there are a lot of players who they don't think about what they're doing. They're just completely on autopilot. They're just, you know, going on the control. They're like, nah, 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 nah. Oh, speeding it up. But um, they're just going a little crazy on the, on the controller. And sometimes that is beatable, for sure. Like, there's a reason why that doesn't make it very far in tournaments. But uh, if you're especially if, if you're new and you don't have all the fundamentals down, then these players are gonna get away with a lot of stuff. So it, it's it's a matter of just getting into it and understanding why these people are playing super crazy. And you can't sometimes they just don't have a game plan. That's just how they play. That's why they play like crazy people. But um, there are ways to beat that. But that's for another video. Um, so and then of course there is the the aspect of online lag, especially since I know most people are playing online. Not many people are going to be playing offline. Uh, I would say the amount of people, like the ratio from online to offline players, in terms of like how much they play, is not going to be um, is going to be less. So there's going to be more online players. So lag is always going to be a thing. And then you have like the input lag on PS4. Um, and it, it's, it's a mess because, you know, there are things that you should be able to punish and then you can't punish it. Well, I mean, that's just a factor of online. Some people, they just, they're still running on dial-up or AOL or whatever. Some people are playing on Wi-Fi and, uh, it, it's just not, it's not a perfect system. Like, you're, there are going to be scenarios where you should have been able to punish that. You know you can punish it and you just couldn't. That's just the, that's just the, the tragedy of online or even just your reactions um, of course, like, this doesn't stop the best players, because the best players, uh, still, they climb the ranks on online, and they get to the top rank, but, you know, these players, they have been able to circumvent the lag and the crazy players by applying their own sort of game plan that nullifies the crazy players, like, like, just poke once and then run away, and then crazy players, like, why is he running away from me? I'm used to someone fighting in my face, what am I supposed to do against someone that just runs away? And, you know, that's, that's, that's just one example of a strategy that works really well against crazy players. So, the, the thing I want you to take away from this video, because I want it to only be like 10 minutes max, is that when you lose, don't take it too seriously. You know, actually one of the best things you can do is you can, thankfully to the magic of 21st century, you can rewatch your games. Uh, on the PS4, you had the share function, which would save your game. Uh, I say the last 15 minutes, and I believe there are uh, other programs other where as, as well, um, PC, of course, you have Shadowplay and stuff like that. Um, so when you lose, and you're like, wow, how did I lose? There's a combination of factors that would be really, you know, complicated. Um, but one way to improve upon that, to see why you are you lost or are losing, is simply to save your matches watch re watch the replays and look for the telltale signs of why you got hit or why you didn't win and uh, even if you don't completely understand what happened to you you could at least see a move that hit you or such so on and so forth and uh, these are little baby steps to just start to get you to think more critically about the game so that's basically what I have to say here today is that what we covered was basically nobody plays perfect. So if you, you're, uh, you Bloodhawk told me once that 
um, you're never gonna play as you think you should. Like, you're never gonna play perfect. You think you're really good, but you're always gonna play less than that, usually. So, don't sweat it if you make a mistake or you lose or whatever. Just, you know, play your best at the time and take losses with a, you know, a grain of salt. Don't be too, don't be too upset about it. There's also lag, so even though you know you could block something, that you could punish something, um, you will still face the, the threat of lag, and it will ruin your day, but at the same time, hey, it's online, it's an imperfect system, so once again, don't sweat it too much, it is just a match, it is just a game, one game anyways, so uh, don't sweat too much about lag, and then of course, that there's you're, you're going to be jumbled with a lot of crap in the beginning, so don't get super overwhelmed by all the stuff that you have to play first you know have the knowledge as like something you can look back into but at the same time get a feel for the game that's really important is to just feel how the match is played feel what players are doing and of course going back to that there are going to be players that have no idea what they're doing they know moves they know combos but they don't know exactly what they're doing they're just playing with like you know the autopilot turned on and these crazy players um, once again, uh, they won't they won't adhere to the, the mindset of most uh, better Tekken players. So they may not follow the rules of like you know, when you get hit, hold back. They might do something crazy. So when that when you encounter a player like that, sometimes you cannot think of them as a regular Tekken player. Sometimes you just have to just feel out what their tendencies are because they have a lot of autopilot stuff. And sometimes you just have to respect how crazy they are because they do a lot of crazy stuff like hot kick and the hot kick and the hot kick and the hot kick or Lars up 4-3 into up 4-3 into up 4-3 into the orbital or something like that. You know, crazy players. So uh, there's a lot of ways that you can you know, win against these guys. I would highly recommend checking out Spaghetti Grips, uh, how to get online ranks, get that good online ranks. But uh, that, that is the, 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 the gist of it. Oh, and watch a replays, of course. Watch a replays, of course. Definitely do that. Um, so... Even, the most, the best thing I want you to take away from this is even if you think you are the better player because you're watching all these videos, not just mine, but other people's videos like Aris and Fay Rip and uh, Rip and whatever, all these things, even if you think you are the better player, don't sweat it when somebody who's crazy beats you because that's just the randomness sometimes of a crazy player. Like you, before you can think about applying the real metagame to crazy players you have to source get a real feel for the game uh and i think that's all i got to say for you today guys so uh thank you guys for watching follow me on all the social medias and i'll see you guys next time thank you